Hello, everybody, and today we're going to take a look at Kirimoto, the um, CAM software that is associated with Onshape. You can get it through the App Store. So if you don't have it, you're going to go up to the App Store button right here, which brings you to this. Uh, you can go to CAM, and from here, you'll see the Integrated Cloud app, and you can basically get it in down here. Once you're in there, it's going to ask you through a couple of checkboxes and whatever else that is you need to do. It'll install it. You may need to restart Onshape to, like, fully get it, but once you have it, it's there. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at one of the parts that I've made just for fun as part of the last assignment, and so we're going to use the Kirimoto app to basically as a slicer to use a 3D printer. The 3D printer that we're going to use it with, or allegedly use it with this time, is the Ender Creality Ender 3. Probably one of the cheapest 3D printers you can get, and uh, widely accessible. It's all over Amazon. I uh, have one of them as well, so we'll use that for this assignment. So you're going to click into your part, open it up, and for those of us... Oh, Kirimoto is just talking about that right there. Let's close that. Let's close that. All right, so my part is opening up right here. So let's say we 3D modeled this part, and now I want to actually 3D print it. First thing I'm going to do is going to go down and hit the plus sign over here, and applications, and we go to Kirimoto. It's going to open up. It may have that screen. There it is. It's going to ask us what part we need to use. Click on the part. So Kirimoto, Kirimoto is a full cam package, which will allow us just computer-aided manufacturing, which will allow us to do everything from 3D printing, laser cutter plasma, to full-scale milling, and everything else. It's not the most strongest software, but works surprisingly so here's my part we are going to go into setup in machine we're going to use fdm that is fused deposition modeling which is most of the 3d printers that you're going to find out there and we are going to use the creality ender 3 so you're going to click on that it's going to bring it in make sure that it also populates in here so it tells us what the uh, width depth and height of the actual build plate is Extruder is a 1.75 millimeter filament it takes, which is important. That's a standard uh, filament. Nozzle size is 0.4. Um, you can get them going upwards of 0.8. My experience is just keep it with the 0.4 for this. If you want a little bit quicker print, you can go to a 0.6. It's usually okay. Any offsets we need to worry about. Down here, we have the G-code macros. And uh, we're not going to go into G-code now. Later on, we will. But once you have that Creality Ender 3 picked, Put it make sure it's up there, hit save, and you're going to be good to go. So now that's the machine. For all intents and purposes, now that we have the machine picked, we can kind of start playing around. Now, notice on the right-hand side, it's got layers we can click in, so it can tell us basically the height of each layer, which here is 0.25. And if you're using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you usually want to stick to just about half of the width or the diameter of that nozzle. So 0.25, we're good to go. Uh, 0.22 would be fine. I wouldn't go more than 0.28 with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. But if you have experience with better, you can absolutely do it. Shell count and line width and top layers, solid layers, and base layers. So these are all this is the actual number of layers it's going to lay down as it starts modeling it. Um, base right here. So now we got our layer height, nozzle, oops, sorry. Nozzle temperature, bed temp, fan speed, all that. Uh, don't necessarily worry about all this now. Skirt count and offset. So that will put a skirt all the way around this. So if we go to view, sorry, uh, setup, uh, slice, sorry, go to preview. I'll point out some of these features as we're doing it as well. That is a skirt right there. So if we go to base, skirt count two, so that if we zoom in, sometimes it'll show the two little lines there. That's what that is. Okay, infill. So we have a hexagonal shape. So if I do this, bring it down a little bit, you can see the hexagons it makes for the infill. So that's basically support those top layers. Shell overlap, print speed, not necessarily, uh, I don't really play with this too much as much. Fill fraction, same thing. So that's a uh, 0.2 or it should be a 20%. And solid start, 45. Support. Here it is there. So it's a little bit more of that. Don't need to worry about that. Output. So these are the settings here that is kind of important if you want to actually 3D print. Right now we're doing it for simulation purposes only. Nozzle temperature for PLA is usually around, 
I don't know, anywhere from like 195 to 215. I usually run mine at 205. Bed temperature, 70 is pretty high. I usually run it at 50 on my Ender 3. Fan speed, 255. This is when the fan kicks on and off. Print speed, that is in millimeters per second, 50 millimeters per second. It's kind of slow for some people, but if you're not looking to make them go quicker, 50 is fine. I've seen people go upwards of 150, and depending on the motherboard upgrade, you can go even faster, faster sometimes. Finish speed, slowing it down on those final passes, and move speed, this is in between. And then you have your shell factors. Once again, I don't play with those. Expert, we don't need to worry about. Profiles is basically giving this an actual profile, so it's under three. All right. So once you have your model in, we can go to Slice, Preview, and it generates the preview of this. I already have it. And what we're looking at is basically each layer of the 3D printer. So that's our base layer. And then we move up. Come on. There we go. And you can see it does another layer. And we can move it over. So now two, it's continuing on with those layers. And remember what we said, we have like three layers. And then it starts doing the infill. You can change a couple of settings. We can look at the movements of it. Arrows shows like directions. I don't really bother with these. Engage, don't really bother with that. Retracts. This is when the actual nozzle picks up and moves over into a different area. It's useless for us. We don't really need to see it at this point in time. The print is most important. And there it is, building it up layer by layer, eventually getting to those top layers right there. Two and three, and it's finished. That is your basic slicer using Kirimoto. Now, what we need to see for the project. So when we go to slice, which hit it, there it is, shows it up again, and oh, keep hitting it by accident, and we go to export. This screen is important here for us for this project. It tells us the file name, file size, and bytes. Okay, time estimated. So this is going to take 25 minutes and 38 seconds to print. Estimated. That number we're going to need to know for our next project. Filament density is the 1.25. I'm assuming that's a PLA density, but if you need to change it, you can. It tells us that we're going to use 16, uh, 1,685 millimeters of filament. Important number you need to know because we're going to basically calculate the cost of this object to make, and that's going to be based on the millimeters of filament. You can buy filament in one kilogram rolls. Um, and the one kilogram roll will usually tell you approximately how many meters it is as well, so we can convert from there. Or we can use the printed weight, grams. So if I buy a one kilogram roll of filament and I need to use five grams of it, it's easy enough to figure out a price per kilogram that way as well. Um, you can hit download and it will give you the G code or basically the instructions for your Creality Ender 3 to move from spot to spot. So that in a nutshell, is how we're going to use Kirimoto to basically estimate the cost of a part to make um, for uh, 3D printing. So that's a real quick overview of this. I will go into it a little bit more detail at some point, but this screen right here is most important. So if we want to get to that again, make sure the machine is set up on Creality Ender 3. Once it's set up there, we go to Slice. You're going to go to preview first, let it preview, and then we go to export. And then that's where you get it there. So it's really easy to get to, but um, sometimes we can adjust these numbers. How do you adjust these numbers? By adjusting the settings over here. Your biggest one to adjust, most likely, is going to be your print speed a little bit. And the going into the base where you can change your layer height. Or over here, the layer height right up there, actually. So those are ways that you can change it relatively quickly and also changing your nozzle size, All right? But as we get more experience with this, we'll talk about those more uh, in detail. All right, I hope you enjoyed that little quick snapshot of the Kirimoto slicer for an Ender 3. Have a great day. Bye.